I'm Jara Fatut Lang. I'm a retired Air Force veteran. I spent uh, 21 and a half years in the Air Force working in the science and technology industry. I did a lot of protecting bugs and bunnies from chemicals and bombs and things like that. And then later on in my career, I did a lot of working with senior leaders to develop communication about new technologies. And my last assignment, which was um, one of my favorite assignments, I got to work as an Air Force ROTC detachment commander in Fort Worth, Texas at Texas Christian University, working with uh, young adults as they were entering into their Air Force careers and teaching and guiding them was incredibly rewarding and one of my favorite experiences. After 21 years and at the end of that assignment, uh, just because there was not much of a future in the career field I was in and I didn't want to face a deployment. I was a single mom at that time was just not feasible and fortunately I was at 21 and a half years and so I got to um, exit service in full retirement which was uh, incredible. And I went right into the defense contract industry, um, writing uh, proposals for big contracts for one of the defense contractors. It was a very steep, uh, stressful learning curve, and I spent a year trying to understand and learn quickly. Came in one morning and without warning got laid off. Uh, based on my education, which was I have two master's degrees, uh, 21 years experience in the Air Force. I was getting paid a lot of money uh, to do what I didn't have a lot of uh, direct experience to do. So it really made sense to lay me off. But at that time it was very, very traumatic and my young daughter, she was 14 at the time, uh, we had a long conversation and I said, well, Gracie, I can continue on in this corporate world and I can try to find a commensurate job at another company, um, but I'm not happy. And Gracie said, Mom, I don't care about the money. I don't care about the things. What I care about is you. I care when you're happy, I'm happy. So she said, let's do what we need to do. And I said, well, it's going to involve giving up the big house and the beautiful cars and the pool, swimming pool. And we're going to have to downsize because Mom thinks she wants to try to be an artist. And we're not going to make any money doing that. And she was like, I'm 100% behind you, what can I do to help get the house ready to sell? So that's what I did, and I started taking classes at a community college, and I fell in love with it. So for the last five years, that's what I've been doing, drawing and painting, and I do it because I love it. It is also a second career attempt for me, so powerful learning curve for me. There's lots and lots of ups and downs. Uh, you see a lot of rejection, especially this early in an artist's career. So. Um, I'm competing against people who have been drawing and painting since they were in their teens, competing against people who have uh, bachelor's degrees and master's degrees in fine art, um, and I'm, aside from a few classes at a community college, self-taught, and I've only been doing it for a few years. So I have a lot of growth to do, um, but uh, they always say, you know, my, miles behind the paintbrush is what you need, and that's what I do. One of the other things that I struggle with is in the fine art community right now, uh, it's very respected to have very message-based art. So a lot of people start with um, a deep and meaningful message and then they turn that into art. And I'm sort of the other way around. I start with what I find beautiful and something inside me tells me I want to reproduce that. I'm at Lowe's or Home Depot and I'm shopping and I see a pot of hydrangeas and I think they're just gorgeous. I'll take 20 pictures of those hydrangeas and I'll come home, search through those pictures and then suddenly one of them jumps out at me and says that has to become a drawing. Um, and, and that's how I operate. And, and my style is very photorealistic and uh, that's, that's how I operate. And I love what I do, and I think that that's, that's important. And organizations like Uniting Us are very important for people like me, because without Uniting Us, um, I would feel a little bit like on an island alone. But out there with Uniting Us, uh, I, re I recognize and know that um, my story is important, my art is important, and there is a community of people out there like me who are 
using art uh, as a significant uh, contributor to their, their life, their value, their perception of their value in life. And what we produce is important to other people in the same regard. And Uniting Us brings us all together, brings people who are making art, people who need art, um, people who appreciate art um, as part of our healing process and part of our validation as we move through whatever phase in life we have.